Hi, Nicole here and welcome to another video. I am making a backboard for an upcoming photo shoot. So I wanted to walk you through the steps that I'm going through to make this kind of DIY backdrop and kind of give you um, some of my thought process behind it. So I am just using a piece of foam board that I am going to cover with this is peel and stick wallpaper that I found online. You can, this roll was $9. So for this photo shoot that will end up in a magazine, I wanted to do a flat lay and I wanted to kind of have this type of background. When I'm on location for the photo shoot, you never know what the background or what the possibilities could be for the flat lay. So to kind of take that mystery out of the equation, I'm creating my own and then I can just easily bring this with me to the photo shoot. Okay, let's get going. So I have done this in the past for like this faux marble. I've had this one for years. This is great for food photography or any type of flat lay, a small flat lay that you're working on. This size works out really well. This was another peel and stick option. Again, I've had it for years, as you can kind of see, it's been beat up on the sides, but it still works great. And I might just bring this along for the photo shoot just to have another option. Okay, so my photo shoot that's coming up is at a barn, so it's rustic and I kind of wanted a wood element. And I bought this peel and stick wallpaper and I'm hoping that it's matte because I don't want it to be shiny because then it's not gonna really show that it could potentially be real, although we all know that it's not. There will be some butcher block paper as part of my flat lay, so I know I can kind of cover some of it up in the shot. Okay, here we go. So let's see, we're just gonna remove this. Other tools I have out are a straight edge, I have a healing mat, I have a long ruler for measuring, a pencil just in case, because I already know the width of this. If I match it up to my board, it's not the same, it's not the full size. Now I could just run it in the middle and just have a gap on either side, but I really want a full, full board for the flat leg. So I know I'm gonna be cutting it. All right, it is matte, so that's good. What's also nice with these, as a photographer, if I need something like this, for $9, I can easily create it versus having to invest in um, a background system. Although those are great, and if I was doing a ton of product photography, I would definitely consider those as well. Um, so it simply rolls out, it has the marking in the back, but it rolls out like this. It looks pretty good. And we're gonna have some air bubbles. So you may wanna find a piece of plastic, which I'll go find, and that will help press out the air bubbles. But we're essentially, gonna meet up the corners, peel, and apply to the board. All right, let's create. Okay, so I'm using this foam board, and this is going to be a small backdrop for an on-location photo shoot that I have. It's for a brand, it's based in a barn, so it's gonna be rustic. I'm gonna use this board as a flat lay, and it's also gonna be utilized in a magazine feature. So I wanted to create this board. It's easy to transport when I go on location. It's also, I know exactly what my backdrop drop is gonna be for the flat lay. Instead of having a mystery, I can kind of take that out of the equation for the photo shoot. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. I obviously have a ton of material left over. So I am going to first measure out from corner to corner and then I'm going to do an additional strip at the end. I could just go right in the middle, but then I'll have the gap on either side and I kind of want the full board. 
So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so I'm just going to mark, I'm gonna flip this over. This has some handy guides on the back. I'm just gonna mark it. I might go a little bit over because once you kind of move those air pockets and stuff, you might not know. It's always good to have more than less. Okay, so now let's go to our green healing mat. We're gonna use our mark here. This mat is a good size. Oh, okay, so for the application, this is what I do. I peel off the back, but not the whole back, just the beginning part. And see, I'm just low, I'm just lowering that down. I am then going to get the starting point established, okay? Right at the edge there, okay? I'm just gonna go gently across. Now I kind of have my starting line. This is when the bench scraper really helps out. Now I'm just going to wiggle all the way down and this will help me also remove all those air pockets. Now I'm gonna put my other hand underneath. I'm gonna slowly be removing the backing away. Another idea for these backdrops, if you're making them for clients or for yourself, if you have a small business or a business with products that you're using this for, is you can make these double-sided. So if your products need this kind of wood look, you could have that. If you wanted the marble look on the other side, you can just flip it over. That helps with storing these backdrops as well. And there it goes. Okay, that is looking great. So you can see I have a little bit remaining, a little bit on the end here. So I can just cut that with my straight edge. So that's what I'll do next for my straight edge here. And I will just, whoops, not the board. I'm gonna cut the plastic off here. It's nice and easy to cut and work with. Here's that piece. Here's the board. Okay, so now there's just this remaining piece. Okay, so now for this remaining piece. Here is the piece that we just applied. I am not going to cut off from here because it's the same piece and will look, I think, too similar. So I'm actually going to cut it from this side so then we still have all that variation. Okay, so consider that if you have a repeating pattern like this in your background, you want to kind of still continue that um, pattern for that extra piece here. Okay, here we go. What's remaining is this piece below. So now I just need to measure this piece, use my straight edge to cut a piece, and then adhere it the same way I did. Now, just to recap, this has a pattern in it, so I wanna continue that pattern. If I kept it going, I kept the same board here, it will look too awkward. So I'm going to use the other side we're at the other starting point and going to measure how much we need. I'm gonna go a little over so then we can trim it. So this is like a two inch piece. So now I'm gonna move this board aside. 
And I'm going to bring out my healing mat. Make sure I have the right side going. It's great is that these peel and stick papers also have these great guides on the other side. Um, so for making, all right, let me see. I want this side and I want two inches. And I have my pencil nearby. Here it is, my straight edge. Okay. This healing mat also has measurements on it, which is also nice as well. I'll link to all the stuff that I'm using if you've never done this before and you're tackling this for the first time. So I'm just gonna go over, maybe I'll do this line here. I've made marks all along the piece of paper to mark where it's going to be. I'm now going to take my ruler and my straight edge and let's just cut that off. Now we have the remaining strip that we need. So I'm gonna have my handy um, plastic bench scraper to kind of guide the way. And now I'm gonna look at the piece of wood to see which direction I might want it to lay. Okay, so now that I have it created, I wanted to show you what I will be doing when I'm on location. So I will probably try to find some natural light to shoot with. I will also have my lighting there for the other shoots for the magazine. So if the natural light isn't available, I'll be able to use my lighting. But I wanted to show you when I have this placed down, I will also have another whiteboard with me and I will probably create kind of like a light box around it. So if you were the natural light shining in, I could have the whiteboard this way and you can automatically see, see the difference in the board when I have it laying down and then when I bring this next to it, it's bouncing the light off of the board here. So you could also, if you're at home or if, at, if you have um, the boards as well you can kind of create this type of light box so again you would be the light shining in and it's bouncing off these um, two walls onto the flat lay below so this is a very common setup that I wanted to show you again this could be against a large window a large sliding glass door um, if you have that available or even going outside and maybe some open shade so that's one little tip I wanted to share. Once you have this backdrop made, now when you're shooting, you kind of want to bounce light back into it and these foam boards creating that light box is a great solution. Hi there, so I thought I would just do a quick little setup, natural light with my Canon 5D Mark IV 35 prime lens on just to show you what this backdrop looks like and to give you um, any little tips I can share. First, you can see I have the board that we just created. Then I have one piece of foam board here to bounce some light in. Then I'm going to use this second piece in the front. Before I do that, you can see I just collected um, some of my family vintage cameras here. And I'm gonna be focusing on the lenses which are up off the board, it's not completely flat. But I'm also gonna use these little blocks that I have 
and I'm just gonna place them underneath the camera. These are the larger ones. And you can see it's raising it up from the base of the backboard. This little raise, this little bump in elevation will really separate the object that you're shooting and the backdrop. And this will kind of um, fade out a little bit, a little blurry. So I'm just gonna take a couple shots. Now that's without the board, okay? That's looking good. Now, when I introduce the new board, you can probably see that light difference is coming in and bouncing back in. Now a little closer so you can see, really see that difference. Okay, so you can see that the board is a bit blurred out, kind of gives a different dimension to the image solution. Okay, I hope all of these tips and tricks help. Let me know. This is again, the small backdrop. And if you wanna see the next advanced um, version of this, let me know and I'll be happy to address that as well. Okay, until next time.